Alright, how's it going guys? Today I'm going to be doing my spoiler Batman v Superman review. So if you haven't seen the movie, make sure to check out my review of Batman v Superman on my channel. Or come back here after you've seen the movie. So now that the movie's been out in theaters for a week now, we have seen two things happen. We've seen that it's been critically bashed to unbelievable proportions. And at the same time, second thing... It's making, it's breaking records in the box office. It's doing financially well. So today we're going to be analyzing some of the things that I saw in Batman v Superman. I thought I should address because I really didn't think that this movie was that bad. And people had really either high expectations or they just saw that a couple of critics had some problems with the movie and joined the bandwagon and was like, you know what? This movie really does suck. We've seen movies in the past that have had problems and... Somehow they found success both financially and critically. Star Wars The Force Awakens is a perfect example of that because it is not a flawless movie. Still a very good movie, but had its problems as well. So here, another movie that has flaws, but somehow is much, much worse according to the critics. So let's actually look at some of the things because I don't think we've had that many problems as people are saying. Um... Yeah, there was a lot of things going on, but I don't think it hurt the story as much as people are saying. Some of the problems uh, that I had in the movie, and I have them written down here on my notes. Um, well, let's start off by saying I think that most people can agree that Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor was probably the worst part of the movie. It looked like he had tics or something. He was really nervous or uh, he was really odd. For, for the first couple of minutes, he seemed, like, pretty sane. But then even when we started getting seeing his, like, facial expressions, and then throughout the movie, he just started getting jitters, like... Uh, and he would start shouting, even, in some of the scenes. Uh, it reminded me so much of, like, Nicolas Cage. Like, there's so many movies where he does that, where he just starts off talking really calm. Well, it's all fine. But then, I woke up! Excuse me. Hi. I'm I'll be right with you, sir. <clears throat> Hi. Hi. I need a refill of this. I don't have a prescription. Sir, but... please wait your turn. I know. I know, but th this is an emergency. Hey, buddy. Ever heard of a lie? Hey, have you ever been dragged to the sidewalk and being tell you... Pissed! Blood! <clears throat> Listen, I I'm sorry. I, I really need... Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I need a refill of this. Do you have a prescription? Well, no, but see, my, my doctor, <clears throat> my shrink, he gave me these, and they're... There are samples of... Darn it! I, I can't remember the name. It's, oh, Prefex. Prefex something. I, I, I'm sorry, sir. Without yes. a prescription, there's nothing else. But, okay, but you see, I, I have the packet. Wait, sir. So I'm clearly <clears throat> allowed to have them. Now, I just need four or five of them to cover me for the weekend. Let me see it. Thank you. And I am sorry, sir. It reminded me of that. And I am... <laughs> no. I, um... No, what am I? I... What was I saying? The bittersweet pain among men is having knowledge with no power, because, because that is paradoxical, and, um, <laughs> thank you for coming. Um, it just, uh, it was pretty annoying. It was kind of annoying, but luckily, Jesse Eisenberg didn't have that many scenes. I mean, yes, he has, he pops up in the movie a lot of times, but he isn't annoying in every scene. But nonetheless, he is probably the weakest part of the movie. So I did not like Lex Luthor. Then the second worst thing of this film was the dream sequences. They were really confusing and at first I didn't understand what I was actually watching for a second there. And it it's really it just doesn't fit the story at all and it's just so random. It's just thrown in there uh I don't even know what the point of it was to be honest with you. Is it for is it warning him um that something bad's gonna happen. Was this a foretelling that Lois Lane, something was gonna happen with her? But he's not the one rescuing her in that scene where she's like drowning or anything. So I really didn't even understand what the point of it was. That could have definitely been cut out of uh, the movie. Because originally there there is an R-rated version of this film. I know that Warner Brothers had said that they were never gonna do an R-rated movie, at least in theaters. But there is an R-rated version of this movie. Probably we will be getting it on the Blu-ray uh, or and DVD versions of it when they do come out. 
Um, so 30 minutes have been cut out from what I'm understanding because that was roughly three hours. This one was about two and a half hours long. So this could have been another thing that they cut out because it really just didn't fit and kind of hurt the movie. Then we go to the actual fight between Batman versus Superman. I can understand why Batman has hatred for Superman. At the beginning of the movie, we really pick off from the end of Man of Steel, the battle between General Zod and Superman, and the people that Batman knew, that he cared about, they tragically died. And, and remember, this Batman has been Batman for 20 years. Uh, he's been building up this rage, and he's starting to fall apart a little bit. He's not the same guy he was 20 years ago, where you can just take it in and be like, you know what, Bruce, or you know what, Batman? Uh... Don't do it. Don't kill this person. Don't, you know, takes it in and restrains himself. Well, now Batman is cracking and he fears that Superman is going to destroy the world. Look, he has all these capabilities and far he's an alien who has the capability of destroying the world. So why isn't he doing it right now? He's a good guy. Any day now he can turn and kill us all. So that is what he's saying. So he feels that he is a huge threat for the world and that he needs to get rid of him. Plus, he's hurt people he knows. So... I see the purpose of Batman hating Superman. There really isn't a whole lot of explanation to why Superman hates Batman. So many are going to say, well, his mother got kidnapped. But that was like towards the very end of the movie. He's already, once they meet in the gala, he's already kind of having mixed feelings about Batman and just doesn't understand Batman. He kind of already grows to hate him. And it feels very convenient to throw that into this movie because it's Batman v Superman. But... Why does he hate him? Um, at one point, I was starting to think, well, he doesn't hate him, and it's just he's being pressured by Lex Luthor. I wanted to believe that because his mother got kidnapped, and he actually goes to Batman at the end of the, uh, towards the end of the movie, where they're about to fight, and he's like, look, I need to talk to you. But it doesn't seem like he actually wants to talk to him, because he says that once, and then he's all of a sudden fighting Batman. It's not even, um, but then again, he's like, if I wanted you dead, you'd be dead already. But then I would think, okay. So he's trying to talk to him, he's trying to work things out so they can work together and take on Lex Luthor. But then again, he starts fighting him. Uh, it's like he doesn't even want to convince Batman. It, it's like he's conflicted. He wants to kill Batman, but at the same time, he doesn't want to kill Batman. So why does he want to kill Batman exactly? Doesn't really explain that element to us. And then Lois Lane. That's another issue with this movie. I really felt that she just didn't belong in the movie. Like, look, if we're going to have Lois Lane not help out in any way in, in any of the films, I think we need to just get rid of this character. Because she needed to be saved in this movie three times. Freaking crying out loud. Superman is trying to battle Doomsday. All of a sudden, she's freaking drowning. Like, I guess somehow he hears her. I mean, yeah, I know. He's, he's got supersonic hearing. But, uh, we're in an amidst an important battle here and Lois Lane over here is drowning because obviously she can't do anything right and she needs to be saved every time. She was very annoying in the film. I, you know, we need to stop doing this. I, like, Justice League? Let's just get rid of her. Like, if we, if they do put her in Justice League, she better have, like, very little scenes or she just needs to stop doing dumb shit because every time she's, like, helpless and she's always seeking help, like, can we please? I understand that this is happening in the comic books. He's always saving her. Let's not do that like multiple times in the movie. That is so annoying. Especially, um, I feel like that's very another reason to to just show her. Because otherwise, if, if she didn't need to be saved in all those scenes, she really doesn't have a role in this movie since like the beginning of the movie where she's in the desert trying to negotiate with the terrorists. Or she's trying to find out if they're terrorists. So she really doesn't have a whole lot of purpose in the movie. And they're like, well, we kind of have to show her again. So they give her all these bullshit scenes where she's either drowning or uh, about to be killed or held hostage, whatever. Again, very convenient for the film to do that. And then lastly, I didn't hate it, but it, it felt very lazy that they would do this. Um, that we got, obviously, that this was a setup to the Justice League. So we got Wonder Woman, Deanna Prince, is in her in the hotel and she's uh opening up the drive that bruce wayne had uh, cracked and on there we see all of the justice league members i thought that was very lazy 
You know, here's all the superheroes that are going to be part of the Justice League. Oh yeah, we have video footage of them, some pictures. Here's the whole thing. You know, one thing it was missing is where do we find them? Why, I mean, why does even, like, I understand that this isn't their drive, this is Lex Luthor's drive, and they broke into it, and freaking, whatever. But why does Lex Luthor have all this? We didn't get an explanation of that. Uh, why is he searching for all of these superheroes? So unclear. And while it was kind of good that we finally got some video footage of each superhero, again, of all the things, all the things you could have done, I mean, they already showed Flash, like, in the dream sequence, he's showing us these small little clips of each Justice League member. They don't have to be so obvious, because we know that there's going to be a Justice League movie. I think everyone knows that. We don't need to have this in the movie. We could be introducing these characters other ways. We don't even have to show these characters. We could just have, like, nice little Easter eggs in the movie where, uh, it could be something in the background that happens. We can see, like, some something just whiz by. And, we'll, and people will know, well, that's the Flash, or, or something, I don't know. But not, not ha open up a frickin' page and, here's all the superheroes! Nah. So outside of that, I really don't think that there was a whole lot of other negatives that really hurt the film. In terms of positives, this movie does have positives. You know, we certainly got Ben Affleck as Batman, he's delivering one of the best performances as Batman. Like I've said in my review of Batman v Superman, I still think Christian Bale is better uh, I like them as, you know, but Ben Affleck does deliver a great performance as Batman, giving us a darker side of Batman, because this is the darkest Batman we have seen, and while people are going to claim that another negative of this film is Batman's killing people, first of all, okay, Batman has killed people before, I know that most of the time he doesn't, but in comic books he has killed people, not often, but he does, he has done it before, and in the movie there's not a single shot that we actually get where he's actually killing anybody. Um, the grenade that blows up, well, he's not the one who threw the grenade, it was the terrorists. I mean, he's the one who activated the grenade. Uh, not He's not responsible for that death. And the machine gun, well, he, we never actually get a specific shot where he, the bullet actually kills the guy. We see them fall, but for all we know, they got injured. So, and then all, and then the dream sequences, yes, he kills people in the dream sequence, but that's a dream, that's not reality, it's not actually happening in a dream, that doesn't count. And besides, it would make sense that this would be happening in a dream, because Batman is in this kind of place, he's thinking about killing people, but he's trying to restrain himself from doing it. So I, I didn't have a problem with that, it just, I, I actually, I did have a problem with the dream sequence itself, but not so much of the things that were happening in the dream sequence. Another thing that we had that was actually pretty... Another positive of the film was Wonder Woman. I think while we didn't get enough of her in the movie, I, th I thought she was excellent. I, I can't wait to see her in her standalone film and in the Justice League movie. She was great. I think um, as the Anna Prince, she was really, you know, she felt like one of those Bond girls. <laughs> uh, I liked it. I liked the element of that in the film. And her being this badass warrior certainly worked with those bulletproof bracelets of hers coming in and saving Batman and I loved her theme I thought that that was one of the best uh, scores in, in the film the, the Wonder Woman theme that we got I thought that was great uh, and then obviously the fight between Batman and Superman when we got that that's great you know and while we couldn't have a winner because that was clear that we weren't gonna get a winner even though on the posters it says who's gonna win it was still a very enjoyable fight we weren't going to get a winner, but, I mean, yeah, Batman kind of, kind of wins. But, uh, there wasn't going to be a Justice League movie if they, if they killed Superman. Which, I mean, Superman technically dies, but he doesn't die. I mean, at the end of the movie, when we see, like, those little specks of dust rise up. It kind of reminded me of X-Men The Last Stand, where we see Ian McKellen's uh, Magneto, and he's lost his powers, but then we see that a piece of... A chess piece ends up moving a little bit when he's like reaching out towards it. Uh, it wobbles a little bit. So it, it kind of reminded me of that, that this isn't over, you know, more things are to come. Another thing that I liked was the visuals. I think the visuals, people uh, go into this film and they look at the story, they look at the acting, and they're like, well, this movie sucked, and they walk out and they give it a, gr 
29% on Rotten Tomatoes. I think people have an expectation that, well, it's a Batman film, it's a Superman film, whatever. It's a superhero film that it's gonna, we're going to go in here and visuals, we're not even going to have to worry about visuals. Let's give this movie some credit for the visuals. Okay? Yeah, story maybe isn't great, but we got to give credit for something. The acting was good for the most part. Ben Affleck, Wonder Woman, uh, Henry Cavill uh, did a pretty good job. And the visuals. Let's give credit for that because I know some some of the characters they don't like. Maybe they don't like the outcome that Batman didn't beat Superman or Superman didn't beat Batman, whatever. Um, and there was too much happening. I can understand people not liking that, but let's give this movie credit for what it is and not just be like, well, we were we already knew the visuals were going to be good. Um, so th that is those are the pros. So... While this movie has quite a few negatives, it does have some positives to it that have to that do help the movie out. And while I think that this wasn't a perfect movie, I don't think it was necessarily a bad movie either. There's a lot of hype going on that this movie is terrible. And I don't know if they're basing it on social media and what they're reading, what you know, what people are saying about the movie, but People nowadays have really high expectations for films, and when I go into a watch any movie, I really try to set the standards very low. Because I don't want to be the guy who's going to be like, oh, this was such a terrible movie, and just start bashing it for, for the dumbest things. you got to keep in mind, even the worst films, you know, people work hard on. So, let's not bash movies for, you know, more than they should be. Uh, because there's another movie that came out a couple of weeks back, 10 Cloverfield Lane. Where people went in and they were really disappointed walking out. And I'm like, what were you expecting? Because in my opinion, 10 Cloverfield Lane might be the best movie of the year so far. And people are going to be like, what the hell? How is that even possible? That was a terrible movie. Because they go in thinking it's a sequel. And the sequel has to be bigger than its predecessor. And, you know, they don't look at the movie as a whole. And this is the problem that we're facing. So... People need to go in, either not watch any of the trailers, because I think trailers nowadays hurt movies really badly, and go in not knowing a whole lot. It's so easy for us to pick out the, the smallest things that went wrong in the movie. You could have been judging Star Wars the same way, but critics, somehow that movie didn't get torn to shreds, because that movie does have some negatives, and I still very much enjoyed the film, but I thought the movie had problems, but I didn't say that I hated the movie. Same thing here. Had problems, but this movie is getting torn to shreds over the littlest things. Uh, in my opinion, the two biggest things that hurt this movie were not enough to make this movie 29% on Rotten Tomatoes, making it worse than Batman Forever. And if you look at Rotten Tomatoes, there's actually a couple of other movies on there that have less, that have more than 29% that I don't even understand how those movies would be better than this movie. Uh, what is it? Eagle Eye, Terminator Salvation, and The Sahara. Three movies I've seen once and I never want to see again. And they somehow have higher scores on Rotten Tomatoes than this movie. This is like Transformers, you know, scores. And this movie certainly was better than Transformers. I'll even say better than the first Transformers. Uh, Transformers 2 and the fourth one, uh, those are terrible movies. I, I can't watch those movies. I just didn't enjoy them at all. Uh, this movie I actually enjoyed. I know that there was problems. I, some of them did kind of bother me. I'm like, but I still enjoyed it. And I think that's what matters. You know, you go in to watch you go in a movie to enjoy it and certainly there was a lot of things to enjoy and this movie does have rewatchability to it unlike some of those other movies that I've mentioned that have higher scores on Rotten Tomatoes but somehow they are better so Rotten Tomatoes is a little bit biased towards films I don't know but I don't think this movie was that bad that it needs to be um, criticized to the level that is being criticized to it I've seen way worse films, and this movie doesn't fit in that range. So, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more content, and I'll see you guys next time for more unboxings, reviews, and movie news.